whoever comes out of that victorious, and especially if they show uh, a really good performance, yeah. that could be a name that starts to get thrown in the mix if John's name doesn't start to get thrown back in the mix. What's up, Barnhill family? Welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. So, Augusto Sakai, Jarzinho Rosenstrike, mm -hmm. couple of takeaways there. I think the big question going into this was, after the last performance that Rosenstrike had against Cyril Ghosn, yeah. could he get his groove back? Could he be that biggie boy of old that throws these just devastating knockout punches, which just so happened to be like right at the last second of rounds. Yeah. But can he get back to that old swag? Can he get that that mean in your face, walk you down KO sort of style back. Yeah. And I think with the finish of Sakai last night, he certainly answered that question. And the answer is yes. Yeah. And when the UFC gives a guy like Rosenstrike an up and comer, uh, a hot prospect like Sakai, they're usually trying to either uh, build the up and comer or, you know, get and by getting a true test against a, a legit contender or they're trying to see just, you know, just how tough this contender actually is and if he's capable of staying in the top of the mix. And he answered that, you know, with flying colors. Great fight for Rosenstrike. Uh, you know, when you lose and, and you're trying to get your footing back and, and you get derailed a little bit and you're trying to become a top contender again, it's, it's always better. I feel like the fighters prefer it and the organization generally does it. They'll put you just somewhere else on a card. They won't give you the main event or co-main event, but they stuck him right there in the main event spot. And, you know, he delivered. He knew he'd have to potentially go five rounds. And I, I just feel like uh, he proved to himself, which was more important than anything, that he's definitely still a top heavyweight. Yeah, for sure. And I think proving it to himself was a big thing for yeah. him because he was so visibly out of sorts in right. the Cyril Gaon fight. I mean, after the third round, he really looked like, oh man, I wish this was like a, a three round fight instead right. of a five round fight. I got to stay in here for 10 more minutes against this guy. Right. But you know, when you have a contender like Augusto Sakai, who he lost to Overeem in his last fight prior to this one, but mm -hmm. before that he was a hot prospect off of the Brazilian version of the contender series. Right. This is a guy that, you know, there's a lot of young blood in the heavyweight division. They're talking about you know, new, there's new faces in main events, as you said, when we did the build-up video. There's mm -hmm. people that are getting put into big fight positions that were not names that were recognized in the heavyweight division just 12 or 18 months ago. Some weren't even in the UFC. Exactly. And so I think what happens here is that it, th this fight, uh, the UFC was looking to see Ken Sakai uh, become one of these top contenders that everybody's talking about at heavyweight, right. somebody who's a win or two away from being in title discussion. And he showed he's, while he's good, he's not quite ready for that. Yeah. And I think that really kind of shifts the attention and the importance to this Cyril Gaon uh, Volkov fight. Yeah. Because now you have, it, it's very clear, you've got Derek Lewis at the top. He's likely going to be fighting Francis Ngannou. Seems like things are not going to work out with John Jones. You never know where things are with John Jones. Right. But you've got those two. You've got Volkov, who had a very tough fight and won a lot of the exchanges against Derek Lewis. And then Cyril Ghosn, an undefeated guy who a lot of people are talking about as the next gen of the heavyweight division. Right. And I guess you can throw Curtis Blades in the mix because Curtis has really only been... Curtis's Achilles heel is if he gets in there with a knockout artist, he gets knocked out. Yeah. But, you know, I think we could put him in the mix. And so now Biggie Boy has kind of shown that he's on the bubble, in my opinion. He's right. kind of like in that not quite good enough to be in the elite category, but not quite, you know, just a, just a top 10 random guy either. Right. So I think it really does put a lot of focus on this volkov gone fight because... Whoever comes out of that victorious, and especially if they show uh, a really good performance, yeah. that could be a name that starts to get thrown in the mix if John's name doesn't start to get thrown back in the mix. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I think the, the top, the big four are basically, we all know they're cemented in there. It's John Jones, Derek Lewis, Francis Ngannou, Stipe Miocic. But Francis, or uh, I'm sorry, John and Stipe have kind of taken themselves out of the race by saying they're not going to be fighting again until 2022. Uh, Stipe said at first he wanted to put on size. Now he's saying he doesn't care if he puts on size. John Jones has said that he does want to continue to put on size. So uh, the heavyweight division moves pretty slow. And what I'll say is people like Rosenstrike, because of the situation he's in, people like Curtis Blades, because of the situation that he's in, uh, you know, having lost to Francis Ngannou and Derek Lewis, 
isn't going to be touching a title fight very soon. Right. But what he can do is work on his skills and, and slowly but surely uh, extend these fight camps, extend these fight years because he's still such a young guy. And, uh, you know, two or three years from now, be primed to take on a, a, a top contenders match or a title fight. But right now, at, with two losses to Ngannou and a big loss to Derek Lewis, there's no sense in him trying to rush to a title. Same thing goes with Rosenstrike. You know, I think what Rosenstrike should do is just try to keep getting some back back on track with winning uh, uh, streaks and trying to just right. get some knockouts back under him. So a, a fresh head of steam will come through and, you know, maybe we'll see those guys in there together. Uh, uh, Curtis blades and Rosenstrike. That might be something I, I can't recall that they've ever. Fought. No. And that would be a very fun fight to watch yeah. um, because we know what, Curtis Blades is Achilles heel is so right. to speak and it's a big brawler and we know what Rosen strikes exactly is. and what his what his strength is and right. what his Achilles heel is is you know the the grappling and obviously if you could take him down I think Curtis if Curtis Blades were to get uh, Biggie yeah. boys back on the mat it would be a very long night and he we might start to see that wind out of the sails expression right. on on Rosen strikes face would, that fight would largely be who can uh, implement their game yeah. plan who can make where is that fight happening right. who can do, who can impose their will to either have it stay on the feet or, or take it to the ground right. would completely determine the outcome of that fight and we could sit here and talk about how Jarzinho is not the most technical guy in the world he did some things technically wrong last night when he rushed in on Sakai his chin was up and he was kind of throwing wild but that's sort of his style and I think to what you said about taking time and doing fight camps we know he's got power right we know if his fist connects to your chin mm -hmm. you're likely going down and possibly out right. so if he can refine himself and, and at 33 years old that is still young for a heavyweight right. you know I, i'd like to see him you know three four or five more fight camps in and see if he can eclipse that elite category and that top two top three contend for a title but his fighting style's fun i love the fight name i think biggie boy is cool oh yeah uh you know he, he he's got a great kickboxing pedigree so I'm, I'm glad that he got the win and i don't think sakai gets set back too too much i think he's still yeah. got some improving to do and you know some conditioning stuff to work on and he did look like he was trying to recover a half guard there at the end and i think had it had it continued on uh, it, it would have just gotten worse for yeah. him. So I'm not g ready to say that it was an early stoppage, yeah. but he did he did show a lot of grit in there, you know, trying to get himself back into the fight. So I'm excited to see what he does next. But yeah, the outcome of this, congratulations to Biggie Boy. But for me, it's it's now all eyes on Volkov and gone. Yeah, that's that's the fight to make. And those two guys are the five and six top heavyweights in the in the bracket for sure, right? You got the big four, and then you got those two guys right behind him. And then there's the next, uh, category of fighters. Right. And it's interesting and, when you have two of the top big four, as you said, mm -hmm, have, have purposefully taken their oars out of the water. So right. it basically bumps these two guys up to three and four. Yeah. You know? We might wind up seeing, you know, Volkov and Stipe. We might wind up seeing, uh, you know, they might say, John Jones, you know, after sitting out for two plus years, we're going to need to see you in a contenders match. Yeah. And a, win, a big win by Gon or a big win by Volkov could set them up to be the person that introduces John to the heavyweights, which in my opinion, Ale uh, Alexander Volkov, it might be the most technical heavyweight that's on the, on the roster right now. Yeah. And without the careless mistake against Derek Lewis, he probably should have and w would have won that fight. And, um, you know, he just got caught last second. That's why you can't play with the, with the Black Beast because yeah. he's got power, not just through the 15 or 25 minute long fight, but uh, eternally he has yeah. power. So I, I feel like Volkov will certainly be fighting for a UFC title sooner than later, probably sooner than anybody else besides the big four. Yeah, he's he's got the, probably the best striking in the heavyweight division. Certainly, yeah. the best back tat in the heavyweight division. Oh, that thing is sick. <laughs> and and yeah, like you said, for Sakai, he's uh, he's bit off more than he can chew. That's the best way to say yeah. that. And I think that he's going to fall right back into the place where he was. I think we'll probably see him get some more cool knockouts, some good victories, and then he'll climb himself back up. Two or three years from now, we'll see him right back in there with the top five. For sure. Heavyweight is super exciting. That's right. Well, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Let us know what you thought about Jarzinho's performance last night, getting back on track after a tough loss to Cyril Ghosn. And do you see him in the title mix? Let us know who you think he, sh we should, he should fight next, rather. We think that Curtis Blades would be a great option, but let us know in the comments who you think. And as always, guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. A like, comment, and subscribe goes a long way for us, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.